And if something that touched his heart or something that was he was interested in, he would be writing to that person. I mentioned the piano stool at home. It's full of letters. He was big into the royal family, as was our mummy. He was like an encyclopedia of the House of Windsor. But the piano stool is stacked with letters, particularly Prince Charles, whom he wrote to nearly every year. He had an unbelievable memory. He was the person we went to if we needed to remember how old somebody was or when was their birthday or, or whatever. And he used to give out to me continuously, well, so do the others, for not remembering birthdays or ages or whatever. Yeah, he was an incredibly intelligent guy. MS took over him at a young age. I think he was 21, 22. And it shattered him, really. And at various stages in his life, there would be an episode that would just leave him that little bit more, or I should say less able than he was before. But in between, my goodness, he was a force to be reckoned with. Those in-between stages. And the one thing that he would never give in, never give in, the doctors were all wrong. The doctors were all stupid. He didn't have MS. They didn't know what they were talking about. It was 1983 when I got my biggest fright and I was a student and living in Stevens Green and I got a call from Baggett Street to say that he was in the hospital. And during that time, the doctors told us that your brother will never walk again. 1983. And because we had to think about the care after that, I had to talk to him about it. And he said, don't be stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. I'll walk out of here. And you throw your eyes up to heaven. And yes, about three weeks later, he walked out of there. And he had years and years and years of when people would say, he doesn't have MS. And he lived his life to the full in between. It was a demon, though. Sickness was a demon that at times plagued tricks with his mind and with his heart and with the way he looked at the world. This last four years, maybe five years, he went into a wheelchair and we could see that there was a deterioration in him. In the last four years, he's been in hospital so much. He was seven and a half, almost eight months in the hospital between the end of 2018 and 2019. And during that time, we were called to the hospital, Florence and I, a number of times that he'd had sepsis, he'd had a collapse, he, his body was giving up, and he said, they're all wrong. <laughs> and uh, he came out, of, came out of each one of those. He was strong, strong-willed, and he wanted to continue on, mostly, probably until last year. And the Malter Hospital worked extremely hard to keep him going. And, you know, last year he had operations, an operation, a particular procedure that they'd never done before for kidney failure. But you know what? It got him to his 70th birthday, which we celebrated this year. Beautiful day when they came down from Donegal and we had a lovely, lovely afternoon with him and he was so proud to be now 70. But he was tired. And uh, last week he was in great form. I was speaking to him on the phone and then a hospital call. But they, even last week they thought two days, Kathleen, and you know, would be out in two days. But he took a very, very bad turn and everything gave up. But he was a great lad. Great lad. I just want to say two things now. To, sorry, Father Richard. One thing that really was central to him was family. His interest in family was absolutely enormous. And one of the things that was deep down there in him 
was that everybody would get on. You know, I said to him last week, I said, uh, 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 Brucey was talking to I. Oh, great, for how long? And I said, for about an hour. Mm, he said, good, and he was a big smile. He was delighted, you know, that people would communicate deeply with, with each other and so on. And when I went or we went to see him, it was never about him. I never once heard him complain about himself or say that he was sick or anything like that. It was always, he might complain about the doctors and whatever, but he never complained about himself. But it was hard because generally speaking, he was so well. He was so well. But inside in this brain being scarred by the multiple sclerosis, but the physical side of him, but there was this pull always. And as I've thought about it the last few days, I thought it's a lesson to us all. Things aren't always what they seem. Uh, the last day when we were leaving the matter, after Roddy had passed away, I met the professor lady doctor who looked after him that 1819, those eight months. And she sympathized with me and she said, you know, your Roderick was a perfect gentleman. I said, yeah, but you know, I, 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 she said, he was very sick. But with me and my team, he was always a perfect gentleman. But what I really want to say is sometimes, especially in a strong, strong-willed person, whose sickness is not always evident. They can drive you to the edge of understanding. They can want you to throw your hands up and say, I can't do any more for this, this chap. You know, he can try your patience. I think we have that thing. But you have to dig deep. We have to dig deep in our dealings with people who are sick. We have to dig deep into the well of compassion, into the well of love and understanding and put that out there and try and forget the rest. So I'm just back in my walk and coming to the end of my walk and I'm going home the other morning. There's a little bird singing. Well, there was a whole lot of birds singing. But just as I walked down, there was this little bird and it was going crazy. And it was a <laughs> And I said, Roddy? <laughs> and I said, Tom Tit. Tom Tit, it's Roddy. I said, Are you all right, little bird? I'm at home, I'm at home, I'm at home. So Roddy, as our bigger brother, because we're all here younger than you, thank you for your years of being our brother. And we, we all continue to look after each other. Amen. Kathleen, uh, thank you for those beautiful words that you've spoken about Robbie and his, his life. Roddy was indeed given a special talent by God and used it to the full. All of us are given gifts by God and sometimes we fail to appreciate and use our God-given gifts. And as we remember and pray for Roddy, during this Mass celebrating his life, we pray that his tremendous example in fully using his gifts for song and music and the gift of love that inspired him to love his family with such devotion. And we ask the Lord's forgiveness for the ways in which we may not have made use of the gifts that God has given us. Lord, you are the vine and we are the branches Lord, have mercy. Lord, if we separate ourselves from you, we cannot bear fruit. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, united with you, abiding in you, we bear fruit and plenty. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. My dear friends, let us pause and let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly ask you for your servant Roddy, whom you have called to journey to you, that since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting peace and joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So we'll have our first reading from the book of Job. A reading from the book of Job. Ah, would that these words of mine were written down, inscribed on some monument with iron chisel and engraving tool, cut into the rock forever. This I know, that my Redeemer lives, and that he, the last, will take his stand on earth. After my awakening, he will set me close to him, and from my flesh I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part. These eyes will gaze on him and not on another. The word of the Lord.
Let us stand to greet the gospel. of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On arriving in the village of Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus, his friend, had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, to sympathize with them over the death of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went out to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. If you'd like to sit down for a few moments, please. As I mentioned at the beginning, Each one of us comes into this world to bear his or her own particular fruit. And for this reason, God blesses each one of us with different talents. However, while God sees to it that all of his children are endowed with some talents, it's obvious that at times God endows special talents to some. And I think Roddy is a case in point. I didn't know Roddy, but uh, speaking with Kathleen on Sunday and listening to her this morning, um, Roddy was endowed with a wonderful gift for singing and music. I'm told he taught himself basically how to play the piano and the organ. He was a beautiful singer, a wonderful tenor. But as you know, the talents are not delivered into our hands, ready-made and fit for use. First of all, our first task is to discover we have a talent, to listen to those around us, especially a family, saying, go on, sing that song, play that tune. It's part of our discovery of who we are. And the second undertaking is to develop those talents that we've been given and to make full use of them. And like a seed, a talent needs careful nurturing if it's to blossom and to bear fruit. And that nurturing takes place very often, uh, given by parents and family. But it's, it's, while someone may have a very special talent, a wonderful gift, they also have to work hard 
to ensure that it doesn't simply remain buried treasure, something that's never developed or sees the light of day. And talents are given not really so much to enrich ourselves, but even more so for the enrichment of others, of all of those people that God entrusts to us in the immediate circle of our family and neighbours, but also to the wider circle of associates, colleagues and friends. Kathleen was telling me that Roddy educated himself and taught himself classical music and opera. As she mentioned, he was part of the R&R, &R, the Rat Mines and Ratgar Musical Society, the Letterkenny, Letterkenny Operatic Society, and of course was encouraged and followed the advice and entered so many singing contests and won handsomely. I just wonder myself how much dedication and practice, how many hours, days, months, years he must have put in to perfect his voice and his singing. I'm sure only God knows the answer to those questions. And Jesus talks about talents elsewhere in the gospel, particularly in St. Matthew. And talents such as music, singing, art, sport, are not really the talents that Jesus is talking about. Ultimately, it's we ourselves who, if you like, symbolize the talent. Uh, and it's really what we make of ourselves that is important. As the famous Spanish artist Picasso once said, it's not what an artist does that matters, but who he or she is. And listening to Kathleen again this morning, uh, it struck me very forcibly, you know, when Roddy was afflicted with MS very early in his adulthood, at the age of 21 or 22, perhaps it would have been very easy for him to have become embittered, to have given up uh, on life, to have surrendered to illness. But I think there was two vital aspects that also played out in Roddy's life. And they are you, his family, and also his faith. Um, I think Kat, uh, your, his mother, your mother, paid a huge, had a huge influence on Roddy's life of faith and belief in God. Kathleen showed me some beautiful photographs on Sunday. And one of them is a picture of Roddy's mother, where he wrote, My Mammy, a saint for sure. And I think in the case of his mother, it was certainly true, and it was very true for Roddy. And that brings me then to the second vital, if you like, part of Roddy's life, all of you, his family. They were central to his life and I think every song he sang and every note he played was for each and every one of you. He loved his sisters and his brothers so very much and the theme of love if you like is a soundtrack backdrop to all of his life and I think as Kathleen mentioned Roddy was a man who brought light joy and hope, encouragement to all and sundry. I'm sure you feel a lot of, a great deal of sadness at his death, but you have a treasure chest of memories of Roddy that you'll cherish and keep and always hold in your hearts. Life is God's gift to us. What we make of our lives is our gift to God. Roddy gave and gave until his final breath, until he could give no more. But like Kathleen mentioned, I think now he's part of heaven's song of love and peace. I'm sure he's playing and singing his beloved music. And I'm sure God is beside Roddy humming and tapping along. Amen. Thank you.
So we'll, we'll offer our prayers now for Roddy and for yourselves. And I'd invite Florence, Sarah, Kathleen and Hector to come forward for the prayers. Thank you. We pray in thanksgiving for the life of Roddy. Thank you, God, for gifting him in so many ways. We pray he will now have the greatest gift of all, eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The gift of life which we all share is very precious. Lord, make us more aware of the gifts and talents that you have given us. May we use them to make this world a better place. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the doctors and nurses who looked after Roddy over the years. Lord, we ask you to bless and reward all of the staff of the Matter Hospital and the wonderful staff of the Birch Ward who had become his family. Lord, reward them and keep them all safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our world at this time. Lord, we implore you to strengthen your people, especially the most vulnerable. Help us all to stand united in overcoming this virus and inspire those working to find a vaccine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who mourn the passing of Roddy today, God bless all our family, both near and far, who are upset at Roddy's death. Comfort and console them. We pray in a special way for Muriel, who marks her birthday today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who have died, as we celebrate the life of Roddy today, we remember all those of the family who have gone from us. Our mother, Kathleen, our father, Leslie, niece and nephew, Terence, Jacqueline. Lord, give them all eternal rest. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, may you support us all the day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. As we humbly present to you our gifts, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Roddy, we ask your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful redeemer who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, your duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In Christ, our hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, with, look we pray, upon the offerings of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dermot, our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Roddy, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh all those who have died and transform our bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So let us stand and pray together now in the words that Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a simple gesture of peace. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, Free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching. Never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us safely to everlasting life. Amen.
Just to 